In the summer of 2006, my native Lebanon was at war with our neighbor to the south. I recall walking home from basketball practice one evening when the roar of an Israeli fire jet filled the air as I was crossing one of the last remaining bridges that connected our small town. Now, if you've never been in the presence of a fire jet, let me just say, it's an extremely clarifying moment. Everything about my world was stripped away. All the things that I thought I cared about, all the stuff that I thought I was, gone. In an instant, it was just me. I realized my life had been too me-focused, and I hadn't built meaningful connections. I was standing on a bridge that was about to be destroyed, yet I hadn't built a single bridge myself. This is the message I am sharing today. It has taken me most of my life and half of the world to put it into these words. Human beings are designed to be pro-social. Dr. John Hallowell from the University of British Columbia in Canada is credited for that term, pro-social. It's a concept that we do things for one another beyond what is just required for our survival. A lot of animals are social, but they do things to survive. We do things to thrive, and pro-social behavior gives beauty and meaning to our interactions and enriches our lives. Dr. Hallowell concluded, communities and nations with better social capital in other words, quality social networks and social norms, as well as high levels of trust, respond to crisis and economic transitions more happily and effectively. Our world is in need of more of that pro-social people in it, and so I am counting on all of you. I am not merely speaking about being proactive, nor am I referencing introverts versus extroverts. That's a discussion for another day. Everyone can choose to behave pro-socially. Dr. Hallowell and I are talking about doing things for the pure sake of helping other people, out of genuine concern of their well-being, their thoughts, their rights. Our world is in desperate need of unity and bridge building. Now, before I start talking about communities, we first must focus on the individual. And in order for us to do that, we have to socially disrupt our worldview. All the boxes that we think everyone belongs in so neatly, we have to set that aside. It seems counterintuitive, but we stop viewing people as communities in order to form our own community. We start seeing them as individuals without assuming we know them. We construct a new, more amalgamated and blended community when we've broken down those imaginary barriers and genuinely understood the individual. The process requires three key components to fully grasp and understand pro-social behavior. Identity, legitimacy, and reward. I'll start with identity. Three days after my incident on the bridge, I immigrated to Houston, Texas, all by myself and completely overwhelmed by a foreign system. I did not speak any English. I did not even know how to check my mailbox, but I refused to quit and return home. I eventually ended up on the streets of Houston, an outcast from every single community. But then someone chose to disrupt her social orbit and see me as an individual. She came from all the boxes I feared my whole life to that point. She was a Bible Belt Christian woman of Jewish descent named Andrea. <laughs> she, I saw her a threat because I saw her for the communities I just mentioned. But again, she saw me as an individual. Her family selflessly took me in as one of their own, fed and clothed me, taught me English, and helped me navigate their culture. It was a pro-social behavior personified. Basically, that family gave me an identity, 
I belonged to a family. I had an address. That sense of identity led to a sense of purpose. We had a shared vision, a mission, a goal. Those sense of identities of ours created more purpose. Second, legitimacy. Three years later, I found myself on Oahu's North Shore. I was literally a world away from Lebanon, and culturally, it was quite different than the one I just left in Texas. But I learned to love it just as much. I was very much an outsider, religiously, ethnically, yet I was the first Muslim student body president at a Mormon university in Hawaii. I was able to assimilate with the community and embrace the Polynesian culture, the Aloha spirit, and the LDS community with pro-social intentions in every interaction. I wanted to serve the student body and the community, and never once did the students, faculty, and staff in Hawaii see me anything less than a legitimate human being capable of making good choices and contributing to their community. They respected me as a fellow person, and they worked hard to help me understand their culture and community. Third and finally, reward. Our ancestors discovered the benefit of community, the strength in numbers, the protection of social bonds. They recognized, like Dr. Hallowell did, that we react to opposition better and adapt more readily when we have social capital, like strong, unified communities. These incentives also drive social mobility, the ability to work hard for a better life. A recent study from Harvard University and UC Berkeley found that, despite recent claims to the contrary, social mobility is still alive and well in our society. After analyzing the tax returns of 40 million people, they discovered that a child born at the same time I was born in the poorest income quantile has a 9% chance of rising to the top income bracket. 9%, that's a reward. And today, I'm here as an ambassador of that 9%. If you would have asked me 10 years ago, as a teenager on that bridge, I would have never thought I'll be standing here today. But it's possible. I want that to be 40% again, like it was after World War II, when people worked hard to get to the top. That number has been declining, and that's because more communities are swamps instead of launch pads. So let me recount. Humans are pro-social beings that derive fulfillment from serving one another. Disrupting our social circles to understand and embrace individuals is the way to form vibrant, healthy communities. Every community must offer identity leading to purpose. They must defend the legitimacy of individual rights and concerns. And they must offer a reward for those who build them. Given what I have illustrated, I want us to take a step back from the world we are in. Step away from all the boxes we put people in. See everyone as a brother or sister, as your brother or sister, or your mother, your father or your child. How will you treat them? Everyone has something to contribute because we are all building social value in some community we belong to somewhere. The social capital of any society is directly measured by the strength of its fundamental unit, the family. When a community is successful, families are united and fulfilled. Just as we would assess the health of an ecosystem, like a forest, by judging the health of its trees, so too we can gauge the wealth of society's capital by looking at the status of its families. Be that pro-social person. Be that Andrea. 
Step away from your orbit, your community, your family, and yourself. Find someone who needs what you have and help them earn it. Introduce yourself to your neighbors if you haven't. Eat at a different restaurant or visit a different congregation this weekend. Disrupt your orbit and hold a space for someone amazing to enter your world. I can promise there is no greater thrill than watching someone climb that social ladder. No better feeling to extend a hand to another human, not because they belong to the same community as you, but because they are worthy of your respect. And now you are a pro-social thinker. Today, I'm happy to say that I am proud of my communities, and I know they are proud of me. Thank you.